Hello guys, welcome to this biology revision. In today's biology revision, I want us to look at uh, this uh, interesting question, which is coming from um, different topics actually. One of the topics it is coming from is uh, classification, right? So let's read through the questions, then we'll start answering afterwards. So we have question one, which reads figure 1.1 shows three different types of organisms labeled a b and c so we have different types of organisms with this one is labeled a this one b this one c then a roman numeral one says identify three organisms shown in figure one point one above so you need to identify what type of organism is organism a organism b and organism c then roman numeral two says classify the organisms identified in a part one according to their kingdoms so now you classify these organisms once you identify them you classify them into the kingdom they belong okay so let's move then b part one says state two organisms which might bring about the decay of organic matter so you need to give two organisms here then part two says name one disease caused by organism a okay then we need to move. Then question number two says figure 2.1 shows the structure of a mammalian sperm. Okay, so this figure 2.1 here shows the structure of a mammalian sperm. Okay, now A part one says identify the parts labeled A, this part labeled D, and this part labeled E. Okay, then E. Uh, part 2 says explain the function of the part labeled F. So we need to explain the function of the part labeled F, this part here. Then B says what substance produced by the cervix enable the sperm to swim in the female reproductive tract. Okay. Then C part 1 says explain why only one sperm fertilizes the ovum. Then part two says distinguish between a sperm and an ovum. Okay, so let's start answering the questions right away. So this one says uh, figure 1.1 shows three different types of organisms labeled A, B, and C. Then A part one says identify the three organisms shown in figure 1.1 above. So organism A here, it is a rhizopus, okay? You must understand that this one is a rhizopus, a type of fungus often referred to as bread mold. Then this one B here, as you know it, this one is a spider, okay? It is, it is also called an arachnid. Then this C here is called a bacterium, also a single-celled organism or microorganism. So this one is a rhizopus spider, then this one is a bacterium or bacteria. Then part two says classify the organisms identified in A, part one. So we now classify these organisms which have been identified already here according to their kingdoms. So we need to put the kingdom to which the rhizopus belong and also the spider belong and also the bacterium belong. So you must know that the rhizopus here they are belong to the kingdom known as the fungi okay then the spider belong to the kingdom called the animalia then the bacterium belong to the kingdom called the bacteria okay then let's move to b part one says state two organisms which might bring about decay of organic matter so we need to state two organisms which might bring the decay of matter. So one organism is actually the fungi such as rhizopus. Okay. So the fungi such as rhizopus can bring about decay. So here we have explained to say fungi play a role or a crucial role in decomposing organic matter, breaking it down into simpler substances then another one is actually bacteria so bacteria is another organism that bring about the decay of organic matter i've explained to say bacteria are essential decomposers that break down dead organic matter 
and recycle nutrients back into the ecosystem. Then part two says name one disease caused by organism A. So organism A was a rhizopus. So what disease is caused? There are many. So you could say black fungus infection or arthritis foot or ringy worm. Then we move on to part two or question two. Let's move on to question two, which says figure 2.1 shows the structure of a mammalian sperm. So this is the structure. Then they are saying A part one identify the parts labeled D and E. So D, this part I had uh, initially looked at it as the acro, acrosome. But again, it looks like it is a cell membrane. So this one is a cell membrane. So I would change here and put the cell membrane. So D here is a cell membrane, this part here. Then E, this part here is the nucleus. Okay. Then part two says explain the function of the part labeled F. So this part from here up to here, it is a tail. So we are going to say that um, F is tail or it is also known as a flangelum. So the tail or the flangelum of the sperm is responsible for its motility or mobility movement. Okay. That is the function. It, it enables the sperm to swim through the female reproductive tract to reach the, to reach and fertilize the egg. So that's the function of the uh, tail or the flangelum. So the tail or flangelum of the sperm is responsible for its motility. It enables the sperm to swim through the female reproductive tract to reach and fertilize the egg. Then B, they are saying what substance produced by the cervix enables or enable the sperm to swim in the female reproductive tract. So what substance produced by the cervix enable the sperm to swim in the female reproductive tract. So the, the substance produced can either be called the cervical fluid or cervical mucus. Then we move to a D part, a C part one says explain why only one sperm fertilizes the ovum. So the answer could be that the first sperm to penetrate the egg, the egg cells outer membrane initiates chemical reactions that prevent other sperm from entering. So this process ensures that the resulting zygote has the correct number of chromosomes half from the sperm and half from the egg yeah so when one sperm fertilizes the egg it it, it does what it initiates it initiates a chemical reaction that prevent other sperms from entering so this process ensures that the resulting zygote has the correct number of chromosomes half should come from the sperm then half from the egg then b distinguish between a sperm and an ovum so here you have to say sperm are produced in vast numbers while only one of them is typically released during a menstrual cycle so this is one difference another difference you can say sperm have a tail for motility while the ovum does not have you can also say that a sperm a sperm cell is smaller than an ovum yeah so yeah we have come to the end of this uh, quick revision i hope you have gained some insight here for now bye